In this week, we'll continue our discussion on vibronic transition. This pre-lecture video and quiz will introduce you to Boltzmann distribution and frank onen factor, which are important for understanding the vibronic transitions. Well, as we studied in the last lecture, the frank onen principle states that as electrons move very much faster than nuclei, the nuclei are effectively stationary during an electronic transition, which is a logical consequence of Born-Oppenheimer approximation that assumes that the motion of atomic nuclei and electrons in a molecule can be decoupled. But some vibronic transitions are more likely than others, and the relative intensities of individual vibronic transitions can be determined by frank onen factor and the Boltzmann distribution. So far in this course we have looked into the transitions of electrons from one energy state to another in one given molecule. However, in a real experiment there are huge number of molecules, hence an enormous number of electrons. These electrons could be dispersed in different energy states. Boltzmann distribution allows us to calculate the number of electrons in different energy states. The ratio of population of electrons in different states can be expressed by the following equation, where the n is the number of particles in a respective energy state, g stands for degeneracy and e stands for the energy of that particular energy state. In the figure on the right you can see that both i and j have single degenerate energy state which would mean that the degeneracy for each of them is 1. Here is an example of energy state diagram where the jth state has two degenerate energy levels. Hence the degeneracy of the jth state is now 2. Boltzmann distribution of electron informs us about population density of electrons. More the number of electrons present in a given state, more intense will be the transition from that particular state. Let's understand it in the terms of equation above. Here I have depicted an energy level diagram where delta E is much greater than kT. If we use the equation above, we will see that the ratio tends towards zero, which means that all the particles are in the ground state and high intensity transition is expected from the ground state. Let's look into an another scenario where delta E is much smaller than kT. Here the ratio would tend towards 1, which would mean that particles are evenly distributed between states. As a result, the transition from the ground to the excited state will be of relatively lower intensity. And as you may recall from your previous lecture, in such a scenario, hot bands are likely to be observed due to transitions between the excited states. Now let's look into the frank onen factors. If electronic excitation is much faster than nuclei move, then wave function cannot change. The most likely transition is the one that has most overlap with the excited state wave function. So in this case, the overlap between this state, which is V double prime equal to zero, is maximum with V prime equal to zero. And hence, the zero zero transition, which is labeled as zero over here, has the highest intensity. Let's look at the overlaps more closely. In the scenario presented on the left where you have a red curve and a black curve which are the two ground state vibrational wave functions, the overlap is excellent everywhere since the wave functions are on top of each other. Now let's look into the overlap between the ground state vibration function and the first excited state vibration function and here we see that there is a negative overlap to the left and the positive overlap to right. So the overall overlap is zero. Comparing this with the scenario where you have the ground state wave function and the second excited state wave function, there is a negative overlap in the middle and slight positive overlap on the edges. So the overall overlap is a small but finite quantity. Let's look into the frank onen factors in a bit more detail. This time allow a small change in nuclear coordinate that is a longer bond length for higher electronic state. The potential energy curve shifts slightly towards the longer bond length. Now let's consider the overlap between the vibrational wave functions. You would notice that the overlap between vibrational wave function V double prime equal to zero and V prime equal to one is no longer zero since the positive and the negative overlaps are no longer the same. 
as a result peak 1 which represents transition from V double prime equal to 0 to V prime equal to 1 is now of a finite quantity and you can see it has an appreciable intensity. Now this time allow even a larger change in nuclear coordinate that is a larger bond length for the higher electronic state. The potential energy curve shifts more towards the right. Let's consider the overlap between vibrational wave functions. Here we see that the overlap between vibrational state function V double prime equal to zero and vibrational wave function of the electronic excited state that is V prime equal to one is even more larger and as a result the peak one increases. The overlap between V double prime equal to zero and V prime equal to zero keeps on decreasing as the potential energy curve is shift more towards the longer bond length and the peak zero diminishes as a result of it. The extent of the wave function overlap can be quantitatively determined by the Frank Condon factor that can be expressed in the equation as shown here. The Frank Condon factor depends exponentially on the difference between the equilibrium bond lengths. Its value is maximum when there is no difference between the equilibrium bond lengths and decreases exponentially as the bond length in the electronic excited state is increased. Now let's consider the overall vibronic transition taking into account Boltzmann distribution and the Frank Condon factor. From the Frank Condon principle we learn that the most likely transition is the one that has most overlap with the excited state wave function. Now let's put Boltzmann distribution into the mix of things. If delta E which is the energy difference between the adjacent vibrational states as shown in the figure on your right is much greater than KT the intensity of peak zero will be reinforced since all the electrons are in the ground vibrational state. However, if we increase the temperature, we can reduce the population of electrons in the vibrational ground state. As a result, the intensity of peak zero can be reduced even though maximum wave function overlap is achievable.